Hello, welcome to Face to Face with me. I'm Daisy Anwar in a program that brings the world to your screen and where we meet people who make a difference to our lives. And in this episode, I would like to focus on Indonesia's economy. Now, the new government we're ushering in has many challenges when it comes to fixing the country's economy. Now, currently, Indonesia's growth is down to 5.2% from 6.2% back in 2012. The manufacturing sector is weak. We have low skills, low productivity, and we have weaknesses in our infrastructure, not just the physical infrastructure, but also institutional, and most importantly, our human capital. And this makes us less than competitive. Yes, we need to create growth, but at the same time, and equally important, is how to create healthy growth at the same time, reducing poverty in the country and making sure that there is general welfare for the people. In this episode of Face to Face, I talk to Professor Joseph Stiglitz, a Nobel laureate economist from Columbia University. Join us on Face to Face with Joseph Stiglitz. A recipient of the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences in 2001, Joseph Stiglitz, a professor at Columbia University, USA, is no stranger to Indonesia and has followed the country's history and economy for a few decades now. Stiglitz is one of the world's most influential economists and is known for his critical views on the impact of globalization, unregulated market economy, and a financial system that creates social injustice and promotes enormous income gap between the very rich and the ordinary household, as well as on international institutions such as the IMF and the World Bank. His latest book, The Price of Inequality, points to the dangers that huge income gap can pose to the economic and social stability of the country. As we now welcome a new government, I'm curious to know Stiglitz's opinions on the kind of growth the country needs in order to create a healthy, equitable and sustainable wealth for the people. Okay, Professor, it's nice to see you in Indonesia again. Of course, you're not a stranger to this country and you've followed us through our ups and downs, our changing of democracy and soon we will have a we're ushering a new government. It's been 37 years since the first time I came to oh my Bali. Yes, it's been a lot, a lot Lots of things. Lots have happened in 37 yeah. years. And not just, you know, in terms of what it looks like, but politically, economically. And one of the important things for the new government uh, to make sure is that Indonesia is on the right track economically and um, we want to continue growing obviously but at the same time there is a need to create a greater welfare for the people I and mean, the new government uh, has a, you know, a lot of expectancy on, on its shoulders and what do you see as the challenges that Indonesia is facing and will face in the next few years when it comes to making sure that the country is growing, making sure that the country is prosperous, especially given the global situation is not favorable to growth in general. You're absolutely right. This is a difficult time for all countries. Uh, there's a global slowdown and that makes it more difficult for those countries that have based their growth on export uh, uh, global markets are, are, are not growing the way they, they were for a long time. Uh, Indonesia has benefited for the last decade from very high commodity prices. Part of uh, the boom in China gets translated into the demand for commodities and that leads to higher prices. Indonesia has been a real beneficiary of that. So that actually is a real opportunity because growth based on the extractive industries uh, typically doesn't work. Uh, it's really hard to make it work. It's not jobs related, it's not inclusive growth, uh, it's not balanced growth. So it seems to me that the real opportunity now for Indonesia 
is to shift, to have a structural transformation, to in part reindustrialize, but realizing that the future is going to be more and more based on a more balanced economy with a stronger service sector. Uh, it's going to have to be more inclusive, which means a greater focus on inequality. Indonesia done a good job of fighting poverty, but the gaps have still increased, and that affects the nature of the way society functions. And so I think there needs to be a, a more concerted effort to, uh, to make sure that uh, the prosperity that Indonesia will achieves will be more widely shared. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's also a concern that uh, one of the reasons why Indonesia's economy has taken a sort of downturn other than the external uh, the problems of our, the low skill and the low value of our manufacturing output has not helped, especially in making Indonesia as competitive as the other countries. Now, what would you say about focusing on manufacturing? Well, let me make two comments. First, uh, you can't just say we want the manufacturing sector to grow. You actually have to have concrete policies and try to understand some of the factors that led to the sometimes called deindustrialization or at least the weakening of the industrial sector. Uh, I would highlight uh, three things. Uh, one, uh, underinvestment in human capital. Uh, Indonesia does not perform as well as other countries on the standard international scores. Investors, uh, people who going to bring uh, firms, want to make sure there's a strong human capital. Secondly, infrastructure. Uh, that's a really important aspect of competitiveness in a modern economy. And uh, the challenges of investing in infrastructure and the geography of Indonesia are very great, but still important that it be done. And third, macroeconomics. Macroeconomics, the real issue here is the exchange rate. If this is a very common problem with countries in which the extractive industry is very important. It's called the resource curse. The exchange rate gets sped up. Uh, very adverse effects for not only the export sector, but for the import competing sector. So it seems to me that addressing these three issues, human capital, education, uh, uh, infrastructure, and exchange rate will be good whatever the direction that Indonesia chooses in restructuring its economy. Mm -hmm.